he's going to be the guy at the helm on this drive over the top and underthrows the intended target, Clarence Denmark, downfield. That's tough. Second and long coming out of the gate against the Evans defense backed up in your own end. Conditions not ideal and trying to spot one in there. Just couldn't find his target. Fifth, two and out for the Blue Bombers. Let's see if Brian Brom will be going the distance now. Midway through this third quarter, Liram Hiralahu is in his end zone. He's been booting it out. They have not resorted to giving up two points. As Kendall Lawrence has some room now. Lawrence to the 45, the 40, with blocking help now. Down near the 20, Kendall Lawrence down inside the 10. And is finally knocked out of bounds by Sam Hurl. And a huge play for the Edmonton Eskimos. A 50-yard return for Kendall Lawrence. Kendall Lawrence going to get some help from his friends, too. Obviously, when you're out there on return teams, you need some help from your blockers. And waiting for this opportunity, Kendall Lawrence has been working hard. In a hurry to get nowhere so far, but this time he finds the corner on the edge and outruns most everybody. Harlow, who does what he's supposed to do, turn him back inside, and Sam Hurl spoils a touchdown return, but the Eskimos are knocking on the door. Knocking on the door, and that time Harlow, instead of giving up two, punts it back, and now Jordan Lynch can score. He will. Touchdown, Edmonton. Jordan Lynch's second touchdown score. And we finally have someone in the end zone here as the rain has stopped and the Eskimos find Pater. Yeah, and you can see big DeAnthony Batiste come out. Everybody's reaching here. And the quarterback that has bought into this system, direct snap, Jordan Lynch, simply getting it done, cutting back. First year player from Northern Illinois has a nose for the end zone. Certainly athletic quarterback, but credit to Anthony. Batiste getting in there and paving the way. Big body just kind of getting the way, pushing people out of the way. And that's an easy walk in for the quarterback. Nice cut, plants his right foot in the ground, cuts back against the grain. First touchdown of the ball game. Touchdown, but the big assist goes to Kendall Lawrence. Took that back 50 yards. And so Grantshaw, who has been dynamite on a field goal streak of 15 in a row, but he is only four of seven on point afters. Of course, moved back to the 32 this season, and this one is up and through. So successful point after for Grant Shaw, and a big turnaround here for the Edmonton Eskimos in this third quarter, thanks to Kendall Lawrence. Yeah, we thought special teams, certainly defense has played its part in this football game, shutting offenses down, teams taking over, putting the Eskimos on the door, and then Jordan Lynch follows the big boys. And an easy walk-in touchdown for an athletic quarterback who's bought into the system. They love what he does there. See Batiste coming around. Shakir Bell getting in on the act. Uh, feels good after a long drought of no scores in the end zone. Yeah, and having Shakir Bell, who got rocked on that last drive, back in the lineup. So Jordan Lynch out of Northern Illinois is first year in the Canadian Football League, a Heisman finalist back in 2013. That was the year Jameis Winston won the Heisman. It's the kind of year Lynch had. But a guy who can really run the football. So the Blue Bombers now have to answer. Loads of time left, and maybe we'll see some offense now because the rain has stopped, and Studermeyer brings it close to the 40. It'll be Brian Brom who's going to have to provide that offensive production for the Bombers because Drew Willie is on the sidelines getting ice in that knee. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to return. That's usually a sign of the guy's day is done. And it's the right knee that got twisted up. At first, it looked like that left knee had been hit on the side. And yeah, Drew Willie's a spectator now. Those 7 to 17 for 81 yards is indicative of the conditions, not the athlete. We'll try to get an update from the sideline with Ryan Rashog. Harris Cotton as they keep it on the ground and fights and slashes for almost eight yards. I think we got to see a lot of Paris Cotton here. And that, that 
revamped offensive line for the Bombers can't get that running game going against a tough defensive front of the Edmonton Eskimos because they're going to have to help out Brian Brom, who doesn't have a lot of reps under his belt. Just 17 rush yards in the game for the Blue Bombers. Brom in the shotgun on second and two. Looks like he's going to throw the football. They load it up. Here come the Eskimos. Brom on a slant has Darvin Adams. Adams last week had a huge touchdown. His first catch of the day against the Stampeders, a 79-yard score. Yeah, pressure's going to come, and, and he's just going to spot the football where they're not. They're coming from an area. You see the man trying to get in his face. Darvin Adams sits in the hole that the defender just vacated and moved the chains. Former Toronto Argonaut. He's the go-to guy in Auburn, as Maddie said earlier, when Cam Newton was there. Braun has time. Now strong arm into traffic. Aaron Grimes with the pickoff. And he's got loads of room. He's got some help oh, here. <laughs> oh, now Willis whipped on, on a big offensive line and then he just crushed Aaron Grimes. Devin Tyler brings down Aaron Grimes, but Aaron Grimes has his first pick of 2015. Yeah, double coverage here. No, no business throwing this football. And and you're gonna watch Grimes as he's gonna play it back here. He's gonna just be back and he's not gonna get beat deep in position over the top with underneath help. And you can see quarterback looking into double coverage. Easy pick for Grimes. And as Grimes is returning this, Odell's got an opportunity to block Devin Tyler and says, No, you take him. Nobody's gonna take him. And he says, Thank you very much. And puts a lick on Aaron Grimes. First takeaway for the Eskimos, first turnover for the Blue Bombers. Inopportune time here, under five to go, third quarter. Also down, veteran center Dominic Picard, part of that revamped front line for the Blue Bombers. They can ill afford to lose Picard. Yeah, we could see next series, uh, Thias Goose, and they call him Goose, second year player from Simon Fraser, backup long snapper. Kind of being worked into the system, but Dominic looks like he's just taking a breather. Tell you, I can't say enough about Dominic Picard, what he's meant to the Bombers. Everybody in that football club says that this guy's just been phenomenal, both in the locker room and on the football field, bringing that offensive line together this year. Guy who played with the Argos was with the Bombers before as well, and of course, a Grey Cup champion in Saskatchewan in 2013. Former star in Laval. That there was defensive pass interference on the play. We review the play. Well, the Blue Bombers are throwing a challenge flag. They're one for two so far this season. Challenge a quarterback decision making. May get lucky on this play. Take a look at it. Certainly double coverage. Grimes over the top. You're impeding the defender there. The defender does get underneath Darvin Adams. Inside out right here. Well, Definitely was... looks like he impedes him a bit from trying to get to the football. That's Couchy Mwamba underneath as he does stop Darvin Adams from his flow to the football. And he might have got there. Yeah. So this but, is going to the command center. And this could be a huge break for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and an exceptional call and challenge by Mike O'Shea if the call goes in their favor because you can see where he did impede. Yeah, that's Devin Tyler. He almost swallowed him. Yeah, he did. A catch Mwamba underneath the coverage there. He kind of impedes Darvin Adams and then Grimes has got a free clear path to the football. Again, another look at it. That's interference on the play. The ruling on the field stands. First down. So Edmonton. they are saying the play stands will not be overturned. So the interception stays with the Edmonton Eskimos. I'm speechless. I, uh, I thought that was a pretty good challenge by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. That's why we're up here. So the Eskimos now. Matt Nichols gives way to James Franklin, who's in the ball game, and maybe just for this play, but Franklin is at quarterback right now. Franklin, who is also a former Missouri Tiger. Some great things in the NCAA. 
preseason too up in Fort Mac doing that game he looked mm -hmm. like he belonged Boy, he just was comfortable stood in the pocket threw a catchable ball a strong arm just so relaxed too. 24 year old from Oklahoma City and look at him dance here Franklin down the sideline is it caught yes it is sick. by Nate Kuhorn. That is just sick. That is that is as making a play. This kid just looks comfortable. Watch him. He's got all kinds of time. And, and he's in and, and the clock's going off the set. His first read's not there. Now he's kind of getting happy feet. Now he's aborting. Throws off his back foot. Throws a strike to Kuhorn moving the chains. We saw a lot of that in preseason. James Franklin brings it to the 45 yard line. He'll stay in for this series. And the reverse end around to Kenny Stafford, but going nowhere. Franklin. That's why, Rod, I'm just looking at Matt Nichols on the sidelines. This just looks like an opportunity for Nichols to get a different vantage point, maybe settle down a little bit, get a different flow, see if Franklin can't move the chains a bit because special teams got Edmonton the last touchdown and Jordan Lynch. So next up, James Franklin. Why not? Well, here's a guy who did not get any any looks from the National Football League. Went to the Lions training camp, did not get any playing time. So he started emailing personnel directors in the CFL and GMs and Ed Hervey said, why not? Here's a guy who played with Kendall Lawrence at Mizzou and also Michael Sam. We hear word that Montreal may see Michael Sam in the lineup coming up in early August. And just by looking at Matt Nichols on the sidelines, he's, he's about 10 yards, 15 yards away from, he's, he's standing next to, my, uh, to Mike Riley, but the offense coordinator is 15 yards down the field. If I'm engaged in this football game, I'm standing next to the OC, trying to stay in tune with what's happening and being played and what's being called. Shakir Bell now. Shakir Bell with a big game on the little drop off pass. From James Franklin, or right now, Matt Nichols might be standing there for a while because James Franklin has this team moving the football. Yeah, you're gonna get a release here, and this is a pretty nice job by the young quarterback with his eyes fading away from the pressure from the backside and finding a nice soft spot. And Sam Hurl's no challenge for Shakir Bell. Franklin now goes deep. A Darius Bowman touchdown! Jump ball. And Darius Bowman brings it down. Penalty flag. Yeah, to, to me, it looks almost like a Darius stiff on the DB onto his back, but they're Penalty calling against the defense. Result of the player's touchdown. A Darius Bowman as James Franklin puts it up in the sky. Alley oop. And Bowman has the score. You know, last week, or a couple weeks ago, it was last week, Matt Nichols tried to do this with his receivers, just put it up and give him a chance, and he didn't get a lot of help. Well, this time, James Franklin puts it up for Darius Bowman, and he gives him some help and gets a touchdown out of it. Well, like your first kiss, you never forget about it, and James Franklin can write this down on this date. His first touchdown toss in the CFL goes to a Darius Bowman. And we may see more of James Franklin the way it's looking here right now. No question. He looks like he belongs out there, much like a Rakeem Cato. We saw him just burst onto the scene, look very, very calm and collected out there. So does James Franklin. So does Grant Shaw today. Puts another one through the uprights. And this, suddenly this game has turned, and really the turning point was that return by Kendall Lawrence. It has sparked the Eskimos since the rain stopped. They've taken off. Yeah, this is a beautiful thing. This is just a this is, this is what this is what a team needs is a break. Special teams gives them the break. As Kendall Lawrence does his thing. In the next series, they throw out the rookie quarterback, James Franklin. He gives his veteran receiver a chance to go get it. Pays dividends. Eskimos in, in the end zone for the second time tonight. 
So James Franklin, the backup, comes in. The Bombers are going to have to operate with their backup and Brian Braun because Drew Willey, we understand, is done for the rest of this game. Hearing from the sideline that Willey with injured his knee on a high-low hit. And he is on the sideline and reduced to spectator status now. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Bombers are going to have to dig deep here under Brian Braum to try to find a way to finally get a win. It's been a long time here in Edmonton. Not looking good for them right now. Julian Faoli Godino from his 30. Dion Lacey down there. Not looking good at all for the Bombers. Edmonton Eskimos posting a 15 point lead right now and special teams getting after it, flying around, creating the first big break for the Eskimos and Dion Lacey getting in there what once again. Along with, that's just on a regular basis. For that kid. Let's go. I went to West Let's Alabama, go. played alongside Otha Foster there. What do we got, dude? And so the Bombers now. With Brian Brom at the helm. Cameron Marshall. Up the gut. Dragged down by Amondo Sewell. Yeah, I think the Eskimos would be content to give him four downs or four yards on first down run the football at this point. 16 minutes to go in a ball game. And numbers are skewed. You know, you look statistically over four games, it's hard to get a real gauge of where everybody is and how they rank one to nine. But just look at last year, a team that really hasn't had much turnover. The Eskimos were one or two in most defensive categories. Yeah. And same personnel on the football field this week as they had last week. First time in a long time that they've been able to do that. Penalty flag, likely a holding call back there. And that's all. That's all Colert right there. That's a beautiful job of coming back to well-spotted football. The ball that was thrown with nice velocity and location, and Colert came back and made the play holding on the ball. But the Winnipeg, ball number is 57. 10-yard penalty. Tyler remains second down. He's replacing Jace Daniels. Yeah, struggling tonight too. But you know, if, if it wasn't Marcus Howard, it's Odell Willis. It was holding call there. He's 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 had his troubles tonight against this Edmonton defensive line. Well, how would you like to get placed into a game and you see he's some right of out your here. worst nightmares coming at you oh, every just, single time? He just he just destroys. It looked like Willie Jefferson. 11th penalty for the Blue Bombers. Against five for the Eskimos. Final 30 seconds, third quarter. Pressure off the edge. Rom settles in and delivers the football up near the 50-yard line for Adams. That's a big play and a good toss. Tight spiral from Brian Brom. Pick up of 18, make it 19 yards on the play. Yeah, and you're going to watch something they like to do, the Eskimos. Bring in the corner blitz here. Patrick Watkins off the edge. Going to bring pressure right here. You can see him sneaking in. And that's where we're going to go with the football. There's Watkins coming from his corner position. Nicely timed football again by Brian Brom. Again, Brom has already thrown a pick, however. Four-man rush settles in, and that was intended far side for Addison Richards. Young, young receiver just looked like he was kind of lost there running into coverage and the quarterback spotted it where he wanted him to be but Addison Richards was coming inside in no man's land. Only a second game in the CFL. Right now, big third quarter. Finally some scores from the Edmonton Eskimos who lead 18-3 after three here at Commonwealth Stadium. Three heading to the fourth quarter here in Edmonton. Good news is the rain has stopped. Bad news for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Edmonton Eskimos have not. No, they haven't, and it, it kind of come in different ways. And we expected special teams and defense to be a big factor in this football game. It's turned out that way. Kendall Lawrence provided the Eskimo offense with an opportunity. We saw Jordan Lynch taken in on a direct snap to him play design for him and use his athletic ability and then his defense took over Aaron Grimes an interception from Brian Brom no advice pass next thing you know James Franklin young quarterback in you know for for Matt Nichols and he drives him you know halfway down the football field and spots one to Darius Bowman and really has put this game uh, you know out of reach for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers basically what we've seen the first three quarters 
This kind of has been the year of the backup quarterback, though, in so many ways, with stars going down. And maybe it'll be Brian Brom who can help lift the Blue Bombers, try to drive his team on second and ten. And a good move there as Brom kicks it outside, and he's got to go. Oh, he gets a big hit. <laughs> That's Jones. Wow. Just Corey Jones. Just exploded. Unloads on Brian Braun. That is, I mean, he gets flushed to his left. He's looking left. Odell Willis gets held. And then Braun's on his horse, and then bang. He gets his head in front of that and wraps him up and drives him. Braun ain't getting up. And the Blue, Blue Bombers again have to kick the ball away. Ira Lahu is going to need to ice that leg at the end of this day. Kendall Lawrence, who helped change this game in the third quarter. So it has been now the battle of the backups. And will it be James Franklin coming back in for Edmonton? Indeed it is. It looks like Matt Nichols' day may be done. I really think that they've been kind of down on Nichols. You know, he threw three picks last week, although he's won his last two starts. His quarterback efficiency rating is, is the lowest in the league at 64.7. And, uh, you know, this kid, uh, they really like him. And talking to Ed Hervey yesterday, he couldn't say enough about him when I asked about him and said uh, this kid's got so much poison. When he gets his opportunity, he'll shine. And so far, Ed's been bang on. Well, the power of email. If you're a recruit out there, you want to play, start emailing people as Franklin goes down, brought down. After a couple yards, Franklin was the MVP of the Independence Bowl. He won the Cotton Bowl back in 2014. He's, you know, he's not far removed from college. No, he's not. And, you know, he, this, this is Westerman coming off the edge, going to force the issue, and Batiste is there. Westerman kind of loses his footing and allows Franklin an opportunity to find some space. But got to get down and preserve. Take advantage of this opportunity. Nate Collins brought him down. It's second down and seven here. Early fourth quarter. Skies have cleared, and that ball, the first incompletion thrown by Franklin since he came in the game. That was way behind his former Tiger teammate of Missouri, Kendall Lawrence. That'd be a scary connection watching those two play college. Been a lot of fun. I'm sure they uh, are familiar with each other. Looked like Kendall. Just couldn't believe the ball wasn't located perfectly there. Kind of reached back kind of nonchalantly and trying to make a tough catch. Well, the Blue Bombers now maybe need a spark from their special teams. Studermeyer trying to get outside, and he's not going anywhere. <laughs> That's Jordan Lynch. Jordan the Lynch, the quarterback on special teams, makes the tackle. They've got everybody doing everything today. And it's working. Including Darius Bowman's alley -oop. Jordan Lynch is right about there. And he's on his horse. And he's got to run a long way. And he's a quarterback. Yeah, he is. And he's running down there. He's assumed this responsibility that Pat White had for the Eskimos. And he puts his head in front and makes an athletic play right there. Boy, people are excited, too, for the quarterback. That's fantastic. So Jordan Lynch, let's put it in case, got a couple carries, he has a touchdown, and he has a special teams tackle. As Cameron Marshall can't be dragged down. That's a big run for the Blue Bombers, who are still very much in this ball game, but they're going to have to get it done without Drew Willie. 12-yard gain for Cameron Marshall. Yeah, there Arizona is. State. Jordan Lynch right there. Now he's warming up. We could see him. Look at him. He's smiling. His coach put me in a hot. Well, he's hot. throwing alongside James Franklin as it looks like Matt Nichols again is going to give way to Franklin here. See him rotating quarterbacks. The game that began in rain showers. It was 4 3 at the half. And the Eskimos have taken over in the second half. The Blue Bombers have not scored a touchdown against the Edmonton Eskimos since 2013. That's, that's just ridiculous. And it wasn't even an offensive touchdown. The last touchdown they scored was scored by Javon Johnson on a fumble return. Oh my goodness. They having all kinds of trouble against the Eskimos. Last year they certainly did combined score 67 to 12 and two victories for the Eskimos. Three-man rush. Brom on a three-man rush is going down. Or is he? No, he's not. Finally goes down as 
Koshi Mwamba puts the finishing touches as Marcus Howard had him, a couple of others had him, and now a late penalty flag. Might be roughness or objectionable conduct. It came very late. I don't know how Brian Brom stayed on his feet. Something after the, after the play, away from the play. After the